Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited to bring to you Don Stanridge with Mohawk Industries, and they are one of the largest flooring uh, providers in the world, if I'm correct there. And Don, I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for your time today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, one of the reasons why I'm super excited to chat with you is because you work with a large corporation and you're the um, the health and safety director at this company. Is well, that manager, I do have a boss. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Still, you have it. I mean, this is an incredible, this is an incredible company just looking on your guys' website. And one thing I noticed on your LinkedIn too, is that um, in 2010, you, did, did you complete um, healthy a health and safety degree at the Columbia Southern University? Program? Yeah, I got my master's there. That's correct. That's awesome. I uh, received my bachelor's from Columbia Southern, and I loved the program. I thought it was so relatable to everything that I was doing in the real world. I joke and say that there would be assignments. I'm sure you saw them that they were like, okay, well, what would you do in case a loader flips into a right. ditch? Yeah. I'm like, well, I just did that last week. This is going to yeah. be easy. So that's awesome. But I'm excited to talk with you about just, first of all, how did you get into safety and how did your journey end up here at this company? Well, I was I was actually in marketing. Oh, and, uh, Whoa. okay. Yeah. And uh, I guess a big cheerleader, you know, proponent, I guess. And and um, when uh, the company I was with, they, they kind of regrouped and they kind of eliminated some positions. And one of those was mine. And uh, the facility that I was at, the plant manager said, hey, you know, you're a really good cheerleader. Why don't you try this and do this? And, and this was back in, in the early 2000s when... Uh, Bob Vizi had just written a book called Behavior Based Safety. Okay, all right. Uh, that was being really birthed into a lot of the manufacturing uh, area, and um, so I got involved through BBS really, and uh, became a proponent of that, and uh, and then that just led into a safety manager's role. So. Hmm. That's so interesting that that sparked your attention. Why that? Why that book and what have you seen change, especially in the manufacturing world? How has the safety industry changed and evolved from the time that you started versus now? Well, I think I think the the biggest change is that uh, we're 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 not there yet, of course, but we are beginning to see folks beginning to open their eyes and say, "Hey, maybe I ought to do it a little bit safer. Maybe I'd not get in a hurry." and uh, so for me, that's that's been the biggest thing. I just kind of fell in love with it because, um, you know, we were helping people. Mm-hmm. And when you have those aha moments, of course, oh, I see why we do this. I see why we wear safety glasses, you know, mm-hmm. or I see why we wear safety boots. Uh, and uh, so that's kind of how I fell into it. And um, it's just it's been an incredible journey for me. Yeah. Um, to, and just myself growing, you know, with getting my master's and then uh, moving up from a facility manager to a corporate manager. Uh, it's just been been exciting for me. Yeah. How have you, you talked about kind of explaining the why and getting those aha moments from people and you started to see shifts with people understanding, oh, here's why I need to wear the glasses. Here's why I need to wear a hard hat indoor, whatever the situation is, yeah. how have you been effective in communicating that why piece? What has worked for you personally? Because we've had, you know, safety directors, safety managers, people that are new in the industry, or they've been here forever, they've been in this industry forever. And I think the common question or our common goal is how do we get safety to stick how do we make it relatable? How do we make it fun? And how do we make it real to somebody? So what are some ways that you've seen work and maybe not work? Uh, definitely trying to uh, push it out there and not getting the buy-in is definitely not going to work. Uh, I can, I, agree. I know, I know making several mistakes, uh, you know, 
with hearing conservation, I can remember uh, we made some changes in the facility that I was at, and uh, uh, we were definitely way over the threshold level for double hearing protection. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we just did it. And, and boy, it, it went south on us really, really fast. And then you had the, the revolt of the employees, you know, and stuff. So I think we definitely, uh, I would definitely do that different now. Mm -hmm. Most of the way, the way we did it. And, um, but I, I think for us, for, for my biggest turning point probably came around uh, 2013, well, 2014, maybe. Uh, I met a guy and uh, I'm also going to, suggest you talk with him as well uh he's kind of one of my partners in crimes here and uh but mitchell chastain had uh came to work for mohawk from u.s express okay safety uh manager there at u.s express so they're they're world you know not worldwide but they're definitely uh, uh domestic wise as far as the united states and everything so uh he had written this program called stop and think and uh, it kind of sounds elementary, but unfortunately, we, we deal sometimes with a lot of elementary adults, right? <laughs> it needs to, I, I feel like it needs to be simple. So I'm excited to hear about this program. So what yeah. did it all entail? So, so basically, it's, a, it's just an acronym. Uh, the, the THINK is the acronym. And uh, we, we actually rolled this out in 2013 uh, with uh, one division. We had one division that was... Uh, within the Mohawk family that was really struggling. And uh, we brought in the, the plant managers from each of those facilities. And it was a week long, at that time, it was a week long class, 40, 45 hours. And uh, we basically kind of just broke those guys down and then we built them back up. Okay. Right. Then some tools. We gave them some encouragement, of course. We empowered them to how to go back. And, um, you know, we didn't see any really change in 2014 and 2015. We, uh, you know, we were almost rethinking, we've got to revamp this class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, but on tw in 2016, we had that division uh, win at our, we, we do an annual safety conference just within the Mohawk family. Okay. And uh, they won division of the year. They had reduced their incident rate by 63% which was like phenomenal. We, we thought, whoa, wait a minute, we might have something. So um, that's kind of how that started. And um, wow. it, it's, it's not a magic wand. You know, I just taught a class this week and, and I tell everybody, I use Harry Potter. I said, this is not a Harry Potter magic wand kind of thing. It, it's something you have to go back and work, but you also have to be honest with yourself as well as, as, well as with your employees. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have now begun to see that uh, as we've taught 300, just this year, we probably have over 300 candidates that have gone through the class. Uh, managers, we, 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 we stick with uh, plant managers, uh, directors, um, uh, leads and supervisors is basically what we do because they're really the main contact with most of the four associates. And um, we, we are now, I, I don't want to say we're reaping results, but we're definitely seeing a, a, a major shift uh, from where we were probably 21 years ago. And uh, so, uh, but it, it takes hard work and mm -hmm. on the, the individual uh, that comes to the class, but also the, the folks that they work with. You know, it's a two-way two -way street. And, and our philosophy is basically employee ownership. If employees own it, then they're going to do it. You know, this is my house. I'm going to keep my house clean, right? Housekeeping. And uh, so that's really what made the major shift for Mohawk as, as far as on the safety side. I love how you're talking about a course or a program, something that, you know, was something new, you test drove it in a sense with a, a certain division right and then talking about how you didn't see immediate results i think that's a huge takeaway for somebody that's a safety manager at a company 
and they're maybe excited about implementing a new program or they're just trying to take their culture to the next level right. and they implement something and maybe they're not seeing the results right away. But here's a here's a testimony that it that you're right. Any class, any class isn't a magic wand. As students yeah. who leave here, I gave you, since you're so great, we gave as instructors, yeah. we gave you the tools to just change your life. I love how you said it's up to you now, students to do right. something with this knowledge and make a difference with, if you're talking to supervisors, you and your team, mm -hmm. and it's up to you to make the change. Because I think that a lot of times, um, tell me if you've ever seen this, you know, just networking and talking with other safety professionals that they think it's their job to drive and push the right. safety culture and we, we can't. No. Right. I mean, that's, that's just right. my perspective. Like they have to own it. And I love how you're talking about em employee ownership. And so what's something that is one maybe takeaway for the guests or for anyone listening that's in that program, in that course that you feel like um, engages the employees a lot. They're excited to do this portion of that, you know, one week class. What's right. something fun that they do in that class that well, we, we we actually do little scenarios. We put put the those participants in a, in a situation. Uh, okay. Let them watch a. We we have you know uh, a lot of our facilities have cameras in them, and so some of our accidents have been recorded. So we we actually play that accident and say, okay, now tell me what failed here, what what went wrong, because so many times. And I can remember actually being one of those people in the past uh, when I first became a, a new manager or whatever was that it was always the employee's fault. Yeah. Yes. I, I feel the same way. Yep. Yeah. And, when I got into uh, the industry, it's like, oh, everyone's like, this employee was, this employee was negligent. They weren't right. paying attention. Them, them, them. So go yeah. ahead. Oh, oh, wow. But, and, you know, and we, we saw so many times, uh, years ago that uh, we said, well, the employee went, it, the, the, the worst excuse was uh, they weren't aware of their surroundings. Mm -hmm. Well, we, when we see that on a, on a incident report, we send it back and say, listen, come up with something better because Try again. <laughs> you can't use that anymore, you know, or the employee wasn't paying attention. No. What? Okay. If they weren't paying attention, we need to look at what distracted. Oh my gosh. That's great. Look at we can't just look at, oh, well, you weren't there. You didn't, oh, I didn't see it. No, why didn't you see it? Okay. And mm -hmm. so that's where, like, the stop and think, a mantra that we use or the acronym, whatever you want to say it, you know, it, the T stands for train yourself to look for the hazard. So we have hazard recognition training. We've got to put folks out there and say, listen, is this wrong? Is it right? We show them, you know, good and bad pictures or whatever. Uh, H stands for hone your understanding of the job task. You know, I stands for identify potential hazards. The N stands for never sacrifice safety for speed. And that's really mm -hmm. probably common denominators in, a, in an accident or whatever. They were, they were in a hurry. You know, the, the boss says, I got to get this out. I got to get this out. So if I take this shortcut, you know, I saw somebody do it. Maybe I can do it. Right, right. Of course, the K stands for keep others safe. And, it, and it's all about, you know, if I if I'm on the plant floor and I see you, you maybe you have your glasses on your head, and we of course that's a common thing. Uh, hey, hey, Apollonia, put your glasses on. I didn't have to yell at you. I didn't have to call the supervisor. I didn't have to get you in trouble. I'm not tattling. I care about you, and so we have. But we have to get our folks to do that. Yeah, yeah. Especially in this, you know, we've come out of the the new. You know, I heard somebody say that there's not a new normal. Normal is normal. Well. Uh, I, 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 I agree and disagree with that because we're definitely not where we were three years ago. Right. right. Just interacting with people. Now we do these, what we're doing right here, you know, I did a hundred of these last year because, you know, I was at home. I worked from home, I, you know, and, uh, and so it was very difficult. This is this, you know, and when you're older, this technology is not the, <laughs> it's not the easiest thing to master. So, uh, but you, you, you young folks have a have a have a great potential and a great uh, opportunity to really make us look even better in the future. So, 
but that's where we want to get to, you know, and, uh, and, and Mohawk, uh, great company. I, I would, you know, and, and that's not because I work here, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of great companies out there. It's not just Mohawk. So. I love, oh my goodness. So many things that you said there. One piece was that in the training, the scenarios, and I, and I hear that, I feel like that's a theme, just doing the podcast and being able to interview so many, you know, different yeah. safety professionals in different fields, large companies, small companies. But when we're talking about training and we're talking about making it fun and relevant and how does it stick universally, I'm hearing what you're saying that if you can bring your training to life with real world scenarios with things that your employees actually care about instead of just talking about lock out, tag out to make it out of the to that company, then that will make, that's a, that's a tip for anyone listening that that is something that you can implement tomorrow, next week in your training to take it to the next level. And then another thing was that, that you mentioned was, so in that training, in that program, did, did I hear you right? That supervisors are who goes through that first or would it your ab, would um would a new team member go through that week long training or do you really focus on the supervisors getting we, that we really focus on leadership yeah yeah what we do in that part we we teach those guys we say okay right now uh, I want you to give me a name and I I we make every student give or every supervisor manager whatever say give me a name right now who's your go to guy. Who's oh, your wow. employee out there right now? And mm-hmm. they tell me a name and that's okay. Now write that down. And now listen, when you go back, you're going to work with them on this stop and think. And, and we, we give them a, we give them homework. I mean, they, and we, we meet with them now every two weeks, maybe three weeks, depending on time and, and how our schedules are working, but we hold them accountable to, they have to send us a spreadsheet now that says, here's where I'm at, okay? And we give them milestones. You gotta be here in 30 days or 40 days or depending on your department, how are you gonna get everybody to learn, stop and think? How are you gonna hold everybody accountable to stop and think? Um, In our logistics group right now, if you come to work in our logistics group, 30 days, they say 30 days, that's a, it's a, um, I can't think of the word now. It's an employment requirement. Okay, okay. And uh, now, now there's more behind that because anybody can learn an acronym. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But what we do in the class is we break down the T. What does the T really mean? It means train, but what is training? And there's a bunch of training out there, right? And your training could be your your idea of great, excellent training right. is a completely right. different uh, vision for a new team member who just joined your company because they don't know your guys' culture yet. Right. So, so you break down what that means, what it looks like. Right. Okay. So that got me <laughs> excited. Because, <laughs> go ahead. What was that? I said, you're very kind. <laughs> no, I think that that is a huge gift that you just gave the audience by the technique, by the idea of adding homework, adding, yeah. adding some action items after the yeah. training. Right. A lot of times, you know, just on the show, we're talking about training. I'm super passionate about training and how do we get it to stick again? And I think, I mean, that's homework for me (laughs) to go back and look at our training and look at it and say, you know, when we work with different companies, different industries, but how many times are are we adding homework and action items to to training? That way, that way, that training lives outside of the classroom. Stays in front of them. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So there, and I love how you said that there's milestones that they're right. reporting to you. And I am blown away by the idea of, hey, who's your go-to guy? All of them have one. Right. You're so right. And then it's like, work with that person to yeah. get this training outside and living out of this classroom. Right. That is genius. Yeah. And see, when you get that guy and he's ready, then you tell him, go get somebody. Okay. So the, the, I guess for us, my, for, for me personally, I always, I always built my success on how successful I can make you. Absolutely. We can make our folks successful. Then I'm going to be successful. Right. 
you know, I use the 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 quote that uh, how do you get rich? Well, you can get rich by being born into it. You can get rich by winning the lottery. I don't ever have a dollar though to play the lottery, but you know, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. The third thing is to learn the art of duplicating yourself and others. And if I can get you excited about this and you can get somebody excited about this and so on, that's how it works. And it starts at the top. It doesn't start at the bottom. I agree. Got to start up here with our managers and stuff. And, you know, you know, we use the simple example of if I'm on the plant floor and I walk by a piece of paper and don't pick it up, what a perfect message that it sends to the employee. Well, if he doesn't care, why should I care? Why should I? Yeah. We're, we're trying to change those. Uh, you know, it's so difficult when we talk to managers and we say, listen, you got to let go. OK, it's it's not your way or the highway. It's we're all in this together, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's difficult for some of them to say, well, I'm going to let this employee do this now. No, I don't want to do I do it. No, you got to let them do it. You know, if you can give employees ownership of letting them lead a safety talk instead of you doing it all the time. Yeah. Letting that uh, we do. We do the stretch and flex programs before shifts. Let an employee lead it instead of you. Yeah. Uh, let it, let, we, we encourage them to bring employees to their operational meetings. They don't have to speak or anything, but let them sit in to see how you, you, your leadership is making decisions for the plant, how work is going to go, how work schedules are done. If we can get our employees to understand that, then they're going to have a better understanding when they're out there on the floor and a decision is made. They say, well, that, I know why we did that. Absolutely. They're more bought in. I see what you're saying. Yeah. They got to be a part of the process. So now they're, they immediately, I mean, just something as simple as what you said, taking them to a, the ops meeting, one of the ops meetings, they have more ownership now because they just got to sit in and they now see why maybe a certain budget is the way it is or a deadline or the challenges. And so if they're driving that versus, oh, you know, leadership is making us do this. You have more, um, you have more allies. Right. That That's a correct. Yeah, because they know they're a part of it, so they can they can help push that outside. That's of, oh, that's wonderful. And so, there's so many programs I'm sure that you've implemented that you've been a part of implementing. But what are you really passionate about at? at the company or, you know, just as a safety professional in general, what do you love doing? Is it the training piece? Is it auditing? Is it policy creation? Like what lights you up? I, I think definitely training is my forte. Okay. It, uh, be communicating, but, but I definitely love being involved in, in something new. Uh, okay. Have a new agenda. We're going to do this. We're going to try this. I love being on the, on the birthing end of it. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, we, we have a great team here. Uh, we work well together. Um, and so, you know, if we can pick each other up, somebody's, uh, you know, uh, got too much, well, then let me take that off of your whatever. So we're able to do that. That's awesome. Uh, training, you know, uh, that we started with, it was just at one time, it was just Mitchell doing it all. <laughs> and he said, well, I need some help. And so, and so now we all, participate in it and any one of us now in our, on our team could do it if if needed to if somebody's out sick or whatever somebody's got to be at be in another location but it also allows us to do this uh not only here in Dalton we're in Dalton Georgia here but uh we're going to be teaching a class next week but next week there's also a class going on in another location in another state so we're able to get this out there to more people and to get all of our folks into this so Wow. Okay. How many employees are, are, are at your facility? Well, uh, this is just, this, I'm just in an office building here. So uh, I don't know how many is here. 500 people maybe here in this location, 300. So uh, oh, wow, 300. across the company, we have about 40,000 employees. So right. yep. facilities could have 800 people. Some of our facilities could have 200. Some of our smaller facilities may have 30 people. So it just, you know, it just depends on the particular area and what 
part or division of the manufacturing world you're in. So, well, this is interesting. I, I wasn't even my mind hadn't even gone here before the interview, but um, you were based out of Colorado, and we, you know, last year primarily worked with oil and gas companies. That's my background, oh, and wow. we worked with construction companies. And um, I'm just curious in your in your world in your industry. I haven't had a chance to talk with too many uh, professionals in your industry. So, what are you know when you're breaking down incidents and you're looking at root causes? Are you also thinking that behavior you know behavior based training? Are you still at the end of the day, after an incident, are you thinking we have to train this employee more or what, what kind of trends are you seeing in your industry? Well, I, I think, you know, you know, 2003, 2004, Bob Veazey's book came out and, um, you know, everybody jumped on the bandwagon at that time. And, um, and it's changed a lot, you know, it's mm -hmm. because, you know, you do something so long and, oh boy, you know, because it began to where people were just, writing in stuff, you know, right. and, um, so we, we've, of course it's been revamped, you know, it's, it's same song, second verse, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And, and I think we, we almost have to get out of that. And, and BBS started out basically as observations. You're, you're watching your, your fellow workers. They're either doing something right or wrong and you either put yes or no. Mm -hmm. The, you know, I, I think, uh, Bob easy spoke back in 2000, uh, when did y'all go to San Diego? 2010? 10 or 11, 12. So uh, he spoke and he said, if you're still doing observations, you missed the boat because we should be past that. You know? <laughs> and so for the author to say that, okay, yeah, we're definitely on the wrong side of the track. You know? Yeah. So, so we definitely, uh, we, we have a program now that we, we implemented called Neighborhood Watch. Okay. Well, yeah, what's that? Out of the, well, it's 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 a it's a it's similar to BBS, but it's it's more it's it, there's no management involved. It's all employees, okay, uh, or floor associates, however you want to say it. But no management is involved in it, and it's it's just saying you know we're going to tackle these things. People aren't wearing their glasses. You use that. Mm -hmm. So during the day, they'll you you'll have a little card or whatever, and you'll. You'll look up, and when you look around, and two people have glasses on, and one person doesn't, and that's a no. Not everybody's wearing their glasses, and so then you you post those. They're posted for everyone to see in the okay. boards, and then the the object or the the goal. I, I don't. I shouldn't say object. That's not very good. But the goal is to go. You know, in the old BBS days, was thirty days. If you can do some, if you do something, you know, there's. There's so many uh, theories out there about habits. Well, if you mm -hmm, do mm -hmm. two weeks, it's a habit. If you do something for three weeks, you know, Bob Vesey used 30 days. Yeah. And uh, so if you do something, it becomes habit strength. That was a big popular word back in the early 2000s. And uh, so we get habit strength. And so, oh, we all did it for 30 days. Then we get to celebration. We get Coke and a candy bar. We get T-shirt. We get a hat you know what we but there's some type of reward you know you don't have to buy everybody dinner or take them to a movie but you know i need to recognize you for accomplishing this feat you know so so that's kind of how that works but it you know it's based on the mantra of the k and stop and think is keep others safe i love that if i see you without your glasses your earplugs you know do i i care enough to say hey apollonia put your earplugs in i know she didn't have earplugs in you know, no yelling, no screaming. It's it's peer to peer. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a uh, thing that has really helped us, um, you know, move into a, a better safety program. I guess if you want to say it that way. No, that's incredible. I think that the K, the you know, keeping keeping your brother's keeper, keeping right. the guys and gals safe around you. I can't tell you. I'm sure you've seen so many incidents. So many near misses, but after every, almost after every incident, I feel like that I've worked on, um, there's been a scenario where somebody was there. Somebody yeah. was there and somebody saw exactly what was happening and nothing was said. 
And right. so that is such an important, what a crucial message it is to, oh, yeah. to put out there that, hey, if you would have spoken up, if you would have had the courage or if you would have had the knowing to, to say something, because for the most part, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of times when you have an incident or people saying, I knew what I was doing was wrong. Yeah. I knew, <laughs> I knew I, I did it anyways. Why? And I love, I love how you said it. you have to dig deeper for safety professionals listening. If you are stopping your incident investigation process at they were distracted, yeah. their head wasn't in the game that day. Challenge, I'm just, I'm just challenging you to think right. beyond that and think exactly in the line that you were speaking of is why were they distracted? Was that a, is that a cultural piece? Was it, is it culturally accepted in that Bay area and that division in that shop that no one says anything and, you know, maybe even leadership um, operates there a certain go. way where a certain amount of risk is tolerated. And so there's so much more to dig deeper in there because it, nine times out of 10, yeah, employee isn't the one to blame, you know? Yeah. We're always, we're always quick to say it's the employee's fault. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that. And, uh, you know, so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an employee advocate, I guess, you know? Yeah. The, you seem like it. You seem like a really <laughs> good, well, just yeah. somebody that I could tell, just like that sense of care. Yeah, well, you have to, and the, you know, I, I think in the in the safety world, you have to have the the skin of a rhinoceros at the heart of a lamb. You've got to you got to be tough because you know we take a lot of, and I say we safety people they take a lot of flack, especially from upper leadership. Well, safety said we had to do that. Why not? You know, you know, and uh, so I and I can remember that as a being very young and and in the safety world, you know, and I you have to develop a tough skin but you still have to care you got to have the you got to have not only passion but you have to have compassion yeah i no that's a great way to put it because i think as safety professionals you're right we do have that automatic persona or that perception about us where people are instantly thinking all right are they a safety cop like are they somebody yeah. that's just here to <laughs> push regulations have That's they right. been walked my you know have they even been out on the floor before or out in the field before and for me what's always worked is that approach of you know safety is about people and yes compliance is important and yes OSHA is there for a reason yeah. but we have to care about the people first and That's we have right. to understand their daily challenges and if something yes. if there is a mishap what did we do wrong as a company? How did we fail this yeah. team member? Because your your workers, your team is they're working really hard. Yeah. You know, no matter what company, they're working really hard. And no, yeah. and my philosophy is nobody planned to get hurt that day. So that's right. I think you're right. That old school mentality of this is the employee's fault. What, what have they done here? We really again, need to challenge ourselves to look in the mirror and say, what could, you know, how'd the yeah. company fail you? I, I, you know, we teach, we teach uh, in, in our, in the program we, we teach is that we, we tell managers and stuff to, and it's difficult for them. We, we have to say, look, you must look at Mohawk first. Did we fail? Oh, wow. Yeah. Did we provide the right training. Well, yeah, we trained them. Was it the correct training? Yeah. Uh, we, look at the training. Yeah. <laughs> you know, was it like we, a yeah. PowerPoint? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, did we did we give them the right PPE? I mean, I don't know. Did, was it the right glove? Did they need a, a cut glove and we gave them some leather gloves? I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, did we did we give them the right tools? We, we, we used the pry bar, you know. Maintenance guys always have a pry bar. They're having to move something. But a lot of maintenance guys, they'll just use a long screwdriver. It's not a pry bar. And then all of a sudden they slip. They they busted their knuckles or cut their hand because of that. So, uh, you know, we say you need to look at us first because we could make mistakes, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, we we use an example of a, of a supervisor uh was went up to a uh, uh, electrician who was working in a cabinet. Mm -hmm. And although there was a four foot barrier, they went through that barrier 
and they tap the electrician, well, they drop their voltmeter and it causes an arc flash. Mm -hmm. Well, they said, well, we're going to fire you, supervisor. Why? They say, well, you, you broke a four-foot barrier. And they say, well, when did you do that? Well, I don't remember being told that. Well, you go back and look at their training, and guess what? We not only not trained that supervisor, we missed their whole department. Oh, wow. Why, why fire? You can't fire somebody because we didn't train them. So, you know, and that's, at a, that's really an extreme example, but that's where we, it, it, you know, it, that's where we have to do it. And, uh, and you know, we get so many comments. You know, we, we do a little evaluation sheet at the end of every class and uh, mm. we get you know I, i've got stacks and stacks of evaluation sheets and i've been trying to type them all up you know and everything to use for examples and stuff and uh it's just amazing how people will say i never thought about that i could be wrong wow you know so when you hear that hey ding ding something you know uh, so it's been very good for us, and, and I, I'm so happy. You know, we we uh, we did a, uh, which was, and I'll, I'll tell you right up front, it was probably the hokiest thing I've ever done in my life was that Arizona Safety Leadership Conference. Okay. And because, you know, we couldn't go because of COVID, and we had to do this kind of, uh, you know, virtual. virtual yeah. And, it, and, and we're just... You know, we're standing there. We don't know what to do because there's no audience. And so they recorded us. And then after we watched it was we had to be online when they played it. And, you know, people were people were actually it was funny. They were sending us questions, but it was so funny. I said, we look like two statues, you know, I'm just <laughs> with my hands. I don't know. What do you do, Mitchell? You know, and we're just two guys standing there talking. And uh, so it was kind of difficult, you know, uh, and but so, hey, you did it. You yeah, we did, did it. it. And and people have, you know, we've gotten several uh, opportunities and thanks for that. We, we've we had some companies that have called and said, could you do the training? How, how does it work? Are you available? And stuff like that. So so we, we do we do have that, you know, option available. But it's just um, it's just been interesting of how technology has changed, you know, the way we do things and and podcast. I've, so funny. I, I've done two now. So you're my second, by the way. So you're a star. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Here, yeah. here we go. And it, <laughs> you know, I mean, not even with the technology piece, are we innovative? Are how I'm here, what you're what I'm hearing and gathering from you is it's not even just the technology, the way your company is willing to take risks and try something different way you are willing to try a new program a new training um is unbelievable i love the idea of people that want to just break the mold and let's do something different let's stop doing the same things the That's same right. way we've always done them and uh, you know i can't believe i've i've gone over my time with you so i apologize i'll wrap up now we, i can yeah. talk with you all day but I'm going to go back and listen to this again because you gave two great examples, takeaways for all of our listeners. One, challenging yourself to look at your incident investigation program is something that I took away. Right. And looking at how deep are we going with root causes? How often are we quick to stop at blaming the employee or blaming you know, their, their behavior and not looking in the mirror at the company. What did we do? Where did, where did we fail? And then number right. two, challenging the way that you're training and are, are there any um, homework, are there any action items to bring your training to life right. and make it live outside of that classroom? Well, outside of that one week high that you get right. that excitement from one week or even the next day, people already forgot the training. You do the training on a Friday and the momentum is lost by Monday. And so what a great way to implement training to take your program to the next level. Do it. I've gone beyond my time, Don. So thank you so much. I'm excited for part two. And um, if you have any questions, if you want to learn more about Don, we're going to put in his social media links to your LinkedIn. And if you have any right. questions, we'll... Um, any of our listeners can contact you directly, but thank you 
so much for being here today, Don. Thank you everyone for listening. Um, so awesome. We're going to wrap up and we will stay tuned for part two, everyone. Because we're going to make it happen. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Apollonia. Thank Bye. you. All right. Thanks, everyone.